can we talk about can we talk about Amidu? Can we talk about the the Dr. Tugube's uh, <coughs> you know research, Actually, and then we move on to Amidu. Now let's hear let's hear the judge's reaction to what Dr. Tugba had to say. We have played we have played to you Dr. Tugba already. My title to your views, but I thought that when we meet, and this gathering is essentially justices of the Superior Court. You come, you are, we are assembled here, and you drum this into our ears. I think it is an insult of the highest order. But as judges and as academics, I think we accept it. We we'll look at your entire presentation in context. Thank you very much. In the context in which we live in this country, and especially having occupied a very high political position in the country, uh, he must be a bit cautious about the type of language and exercise he carries out, especially the last words of his presentation, the time to act is now. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, is he inviting the public to drive us out from our offices? You know, it, it's, it, it's, it, it, it amounts to it's capable of different meanings. So if you, you are in Legon, you can say that. But immediately you go out. And then the, so the learning professor says, the time to act is now. So let us act. And then it starts. So please, and we have had history behind us. So we must be careful what we say and do at all particular times. I got a little worried listening to you because to my mind I see if we were questioning the integrity of our Supreme Court judges when they sit on constitutional matters or on political cases if you read the judgments well it's a pity we couldn't get all your the judgments you analyzed they give reasons for the decisions they take. And when it's constitutional matters, they all write individually. And each of them will assign a reason for taking their decisions. And if we are to agree with you that because they've been appointed during a certain political era, they tend to give judgments leaning towards the party that appointed them. Then I start getting worried because then it's going into the integrity of our judges that our judges can bend decisions to suit governments that appointed them. And that is not it. Under our constitution, a judge will be appointed during somebody's time. And that somebody most likely until we get an independent uh, candidate who wins. That somebody will belong to one party or the other. After you have been appointed, it's up to any Tom, Dick and Harry to put whatever political um, sprinkling they want to put on what has motivated your decision. But so long as it is in line with the law and it is sound and follows the facts, well, your view is as good as mine. And, but I think that, um, yes, you know, it's an American type of uh, research that you have done. That's fine, but please be careful. Talking about importation, be careful what you're importing into our environment. They are used to that, we are not. We can stand here and accept what you're saying without walking out. We didn't, we didn't walk out. I don't think there was a single judge who agreed with what you were saying, but we didn't walk out. Maybe you need to add a little, what, what the Bible says, salt to what you have presented. And 
make sure because our society and the environment is completely different from the from the American one which has developed its own systems we've never had this kind of thing uh, people can think whatever they like but when it receives the imprimatur of a professor it becomes dangerous Right, so you're here on News File and you've just been listening to Justice's Charity Lobby, uh, Justice Jones Doche, who started it, and then um, the Honorable First uh, uh, the Honorable um, Chief Justice, Justice. Her Ladyship, the Chief Justice herself. Right, so, Yao Wabing Asamoah, I mentioned your name in full. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that they have cause for concern? Are they justified in their concern? If you don't mind, before I get there, just a piece of very important public information. Um, the petition to the presidency uh, by the law students was referred to the subsidiary legislation okay. Oh, committee. Okay. Okay. And the last sitting of the committee was in public. The, the last sitting was yes. related in public. That's where they came with their lawyers. With the lawyers the and council legal counsel as well. Okay. The report from that is going to come to the floor mm -hmm. of the House. Okay. And I believe when the report comes, mm -hmm. then my uh, Honorable Minority Chief Whip <laughs> can then attempt to mobilize his three quarters. But that's where we two are two now. Two right. two yes, two that's where we are now. Yeah. There are two thirds. Okay. But that's where we are now. As far as we are concerned now, the LI has been laid okay. properly. You and just need 21, 21 days. Where, working days. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm coming back to this. Yeah. And let's go for the juggler so that we can proceed uh, to Martin oh, 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 All right, all right, all right. I, I think that, like it or not, at some point, the myth of judicial criticism and otherwise would have been exploded in this country. We are a developing nation from the time when we've had military rule and otherwise. We've had a period when, indeed, judges were appointed and disappointed by the executive. Mm -hmm. We are growing. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that we are growing, we are also developing case law. Mm -hmm. Interesting things have happened in this country. Mm -hmm. We have to follow an attorney general was it necessarily politically decided. Mm -hmm. We even had a 31st December case. Yeah. When the Supreme Court, <coughs> mostly appointed by the PNDC, and in a new era, was bold enough to overthrow the single most important, the dearest to the then chairman's heart. He still celebrates it, but according to what the Supreme Court told him to. Mm -hmm. Fast track to the presidential petition. Where do we stand? I believe that it's important that we accept that notwithstanding anybody's proclivities. <laughs> and the Americans who exhaust it at length, whether you are Republican biased mm -hmm. or Democratic mm -hmm. biased, we don't go to that extent. But we know exactly that this way may have go this way or that way may go that way. I think jurisprudence only stands the test of the law and social norms. Mm -hmm. And many, many of the judges, for their own sake, and for the future of the country. Because they make law for the country, try to at least steer as close to jurisprudence as circumstances, public policy, and social norms demand. And let's look at the evolution. America. Social norms matter. Mm. Yeah. Uh, black men. We were regarded as good. Mm. Dred Scott. The very first slavery case that went to the Supreme Court of America. Dred Scott. It was decided that he was good. So the owner could... Trade the goods <laughs> as an yes. A few years later, mm. barely a hundred years later, the same Supreme Court in Plessy and Ferguson said that oh, he had attributes of a human being, but he was not quite a human being to the extent of a white man. <laughs> so he should be recognized as a human being, but given separate facilities from that yeah. of a white man. Separate but that, equal doctrine. Separate but equal. That's why you had. Uh, black people sitting at the back of buses, you had different washrooms, and you had all those things, separate but equal. If at the beginning of apartheid, that's practiced more brutally in South Africa. Then you come to the modern era, 1954, Brown versus Board of Education, mm. and the Supreme Court explodes the myth mm. and says we are all equal. Mm. Even after the Supreme Court made the pronouncement, look at how much stress America went through mm. to, implement to implement the decision. the decision. Because the social norms of the people were so ingrained with that feeling. I think we are in the era where intellectualism is rubbing against development. Mm. We've moved beyond the period where we could simply vote and we now we have alternated. 
we've now realized that any group can be in charge. You are dealing with a judiciary that is just coming out of, you know, this huge Anas, you know, expose, yes. which gave the impression <coughs> to the nation that the judiciary itself was not cleansing itself. Yes. We knew, and, and I worked in a firm where a judge was reported and action was taken. Yes. And people got the impression as if until Anas did that, Nothing was yeah. happening to judges who were erring, errant judges. Mm -hmm. And you are, probably, you are, you are throwing probably, this out. Yeah. Probably, probably mm -hmm. they were not in a yes. position yes. to tell their own story. Mm. Now the spaces are opening up. The difficulty of judicial tradition is that they are not able to talk. Mm. People can criticize them, but they are not able to respond because it then shows a certain standard of... But we should be building an infrastructure around this entire thing. It shouldn't just be a Professor Atuguba speaking in this way, it should be another person who's also probably speaking for and on behalf of the way they do their things. We should be strengthening the judiciary. Yeah, the best practice is that lawyers speak for the judges and the lawyers association speak the for the judges. The best practice in the American system, which he probably relied on very heavily for his research, mm. is that very good quality support services go to support justices. Mm -hmm. A justice of the Supreme Court in America has a, a whole staff yes this is man, has everything has everything manned by the best brains the best law yeah, school students go there yes, from the, best best the best mm -hmm. and only the best mm -hmm. and therefore notwithstanding your political affiliation it is assumed that when you deliver a judgment it goes to the knob of the matter it goes to enhance the quality of jurisprudence so you think their reaction is not measured no i i think they are feeling sensitive and i think uh, 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 much as they have reason and right. Because I didn't hear them dispute the results. They are <laughs> saying that the language mm. and, and the attack said they on have the right integrity. to walk out. Yes, the language not. and the integrity. I think they have a right okay. to be a little miffed about the way they interpret it. Okay. But I also think that they, we have reached the stage where they must open up and begin to accept that these things will happen. Mm. And that's, it's not just judicial corruption. Right. There are other places where we are inundated with corruption. Mm. And as a society, we must face up to these issues. Okay. Yes, uh, Dominic. <coughs> yeah, um, you know, I, I want to start uh, by going back to what uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Justice uh, Holmes, once said, yeah. um, who served as the ben benchmark, you know, for legal realism. Right. He said, the predictions of what the course will do, in fact, and nothing more pretentious is what I mean by law. The law. Okay, and that meant, as Yao has pointed out, that social norms, even what the judge eats in the morning, the, um, you know, a relationship that the judge is having with the wife and so on, these can impact on decision making. We in this country should not think that judges are apolitical, all right? Judges are political animals also. And therefore, when they are making decisions, their political inclinations do influence them. And I, I mean, I have been an advocate of uh, an Let's open be clear. admission. Let's be clear that... Uh, Dr. Atuguba is talking about areas where the law is not clear. That is so. But where the law is clear, he has not said they go to do no, I'm, or they I'm bring even, to bear I'm their even political... Going, I'm going by and he, he did a hundred cases. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going political beyond that. Cases. I'm going beyond that to say that. You see, Yao pointed out the fact that in the, in the, on the U.S. Supreme Court, okay, ideological divisions are acceptable. Right. If there's an abortion case, you can predict how the Republican judges will vote, mm. all right, and right. how the liberal judges mm -hmm. appointed by the Democrats will also vote. Mm -hmm. If there's a case on gun control, the Republicans will go for an interpretation of the Constitution, okay, that validates the right to bear arms, whereas the Democrats will go for, you know, things like the protection of uh, life, you know, and liberty and so on and so forth, okay. So the ideological divisions, you know, are accepted and they are based upon a principled interpretation of the Constitution. So that is the same thing I have been advocating for our judges here in this country. The only problem is that between the, the two political parties, okay, ideological differences have vanished. <laughs> All right? You know, we are now doing pragmatic polit polit politics. And so it is very difficult for you to say, um, you know, on an issue where the NDC will, I mean, stand, and where the MPP will stand, based upon the initial ideological predispositions of their founders. Okay? 
it's very, very difficult to, I mean, if I tell uh, people that I'm a social democrat, okay, they don't, you know, um, see the difference between myself and Yao. Mm. All right? But, but so, is, it not, is it not faulty logic to suggest that for as long as they cannot be unanimous on a political case, then... You know they no, they would they would have to do <laughs> no I I don't I'm not I'm not, I'm not suggesting that mm. lack of unanimity in an in an office cell yes the suggestion evidence. was that when there is lack of unanimity then there's no fidelity to the 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 principles of law or law well I I need to read Raymond's piece to be able okay. to uh, to I understand exactly because wrong. I haven't yeah. I haven't I, I didn't listen to the entire presentation right and uh, I haven't read his piece mm. you know and as an academic he does I not cannot intend to publish it well that is that is surprising okay, okay. but uh, anyway you see the th the other thing that I wanted to say you don't put judges and academics in the same room mm. I think the organizers of the program goofed big time by putting the judges and the academics in the same room you know, and, and accepting topics that were critical of the judges. Mm. Because, you see, what, it, what then happened ultimately, it, you know, is what we saw, where you have public reactions by the judges to the findings of an academician, right? At the end of the day, their reactions, you know, will, will, will become a matter of public debate. And th this, is where, this is where we have found ourselves now, mm. okay? At, and then if a matter goes before them, that relates in any way to what Dr. Atubga has said. People will now be watching them mm. to see where they will rule. Mm. Okay, and I don't think that that was a, I mean, a good thing to do. They felt they felt scandalized. You could you could tell, right? And and you could touch their feelings. Yes, uh, particularly uh, Justice Do Jones Doshe. Also, you could hear from uh, Justice Charity Labi. Yes, you know, and the CJ. And you yes, know. but the the the, the question I have asked is. As we know, in Mensa Bosu, um, Banfordado says that, you know, criticism of the judges and their decisions, however rambunctious, is allowed, except that you ought to be tempered and measured. Yeah. And it is what <coughs> you, do, you shouldn't do is when you, you do scurrilous abuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that this gets closer to abuse? Because I, that's I, how some of them felt. No, I don't think that so. But you are questioning I, their integrity. I, I, don't think, I don't even think that the issue of integrity arose, mm. right? You see, when you say, um, you know, somebody lacks integrity in terms of their decision making, right? You are saying that they deviated from primary principles that should ought to under, under, underpin that decision. All right, and I don't think that that is what I, t I mean, uh, Doctor. I mean, uh, pro, uh, pro, the prof was saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, um, Kuku. Uh, <coughs> and I can see Kuku exhibit some <laughs> stuff of judicial history, <laughs> <laughs> okay. code of conduct, and everything else. Not okay. exactly. Mm. See, you know what? Just a few moments ago, you pushed me somewhere. I'm, I hope I don't get to that level. But did you see? that there is no intention to publish the research findings or the report. He had said that when his researchers were done, he told them, he said it publicly right there, that he told them that, you know, they should clean it from the, from the laptop. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Mm -hmm. But he what? presented it at the forum. No way. Huh? Was, it, was there a full disclosure? Did we get a full complement of the research findings mm. and work that he had done at the yeah. forum. Yeah, he was doing PowerPoint and he was speaking to a document, no, I'm sure. He still haven't answered my question. Mm. Did what he what happened there, did it constitute the full complement of the work and findings? Yes. Oh, isn't it somewhere? Really? No, no, it, yeah. The the PowerPoint oh. presentation. But you see, if you do that, then publish it. Yeah. If indeed what he did was full disclosure the full complement mm -hmm. of the report and the findings at the full that was live. Huh? Mm -hmm. There were people there, journalists and others were there, judges and others were there. Then what's the big deal in not proceeding further to put it in the form of a document that we can all assess mm -hmm. and read and, read, yeah. and do a thorough interrogation of the issues you've raised? I have a little problem there. I didn't know that. So my position was that, look, Perhaps what we are doing here amounts to some premature something, something. Mm, so, <laughs> yes, so we might as well, yes, we might as well wait, <coughs> assess the report and its full findings, and then deal with it. Otherwise, we might be unfair to him 
as well as the judges who think it's unfair to them. Now we are to told of 100 cases. Mm. Which cases? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. In fact, he said that they are not finished conclusive yet. He said they are not finished. Because these are the portions that are done, you know. Mm. <sighs> well, well, well. He's somebody I like and respect. Very intelligent man. We've had our own differences before, but I have huge respect for him. I think he's a gentleman and I think he's learned. But I'm now a bit worried. Political cases, constitutional cases, which ones? What are we discussing? He gave, he gave a working definition of what constitutes a political case. So which case? That the parties involved are, okay, which particular case? Yes, okay. so which one? Okay. Because I need to know, mm -hmm. so as to be able to do a better job in analyzing. Which case? Here we are, we'll be invited into a realm of, uh, you see, emptiness. Everything there is blank. And we are being asked to interrogate a blank space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are we going to be able to do a good job? Well, my, my, justice my, my, to my the production whole thing? team is telling me that he would release it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would have waited. To be honest, if that's the case, then I'll wait for the thing to be released. But he spends an hour or so. Unfortunately, you know, I wasn't there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't also got a text mm -hmm. of what he presented. Right. I have to be honest. You see, right. I want to be very fair. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a serious project. Look, it's a very serious project. Mm. To the extent that you see how the, the ch judges reacted. Right. I, uh, the chief justice thing. I was going through, yesterday I was going through a Hansard, mm. and then I realized that this thing of pol political coloration of judges, yeah. huh, is that But, the but idea? you know, as regards the specific cases, <coughs> when he was doing the PowerPoint, he displayed them. Yeah. yeah he displayed so them. So the TV cameras <coughs> captured Then you should have been thing. fair to us mm. by yeah. giving oh, us yeah. the specifics. Okay. That would okay. make the discussion okay. more meaningful. Because right. as a city, I didn't know. Proceed Fine. with the point you, you know, were going to make. This thing yeah. about uh, political coloration of ju uh, judges, it came up when Barton, uh, Ebo Barton Udrow was mm -hmm. being vetted. Mm -hmm. In fact, a report that was submitted to mm -hmm. the House, mm -hmm. which is 21st April 2009, uh, it, it goes close to the Chief Justice's view. Uh, under political coloration of judges, uh, column uh, 34, 21st April 2009, they say, according to the nominee, that is uh, uh, Batinodro, mm. Ghana has not reached the level of the United States of America where the political persuasion of judges could be made known. To him, such public knowledge of judges' political callers will not help the country. He, however, agreed that Justice Akins was a good example of objectivity and professionalism on the bench, but maintained that, quote, not everybody could be that cautious. You see, again, I have a problem. Political persuasion or coloration, or is it the philosophical and ideological persuasion? There are extensions that a party appoints me. The party may be social democratic and appointed me, mm. but perhaps my philosophy is mm. not exactly social democratic. Mm. How was the link done in terms of the cases picked and the judgments that those particular judges gave? Was it linked to the fact that they were appointed by a party? That yes. is the president, of course. Yes. Strictly speaking, is the, the president. Yes, is the yeah. appointing But the ruling appointing. party. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, my brother, if this kind of project is done in the way now we are discussing, it's very dangerous. Mm. It's an invitation to step into a minefield. Mm. That's my candid opinion. Okay. I love it. I love the, uh, the, the idea. But the if we don't have the yeah, further come. and better particulars, mm. look, it's a very dangerous exercise to embark on. Mm. I will plead uh, with uh, Professor uh, Atuguba to do us a favor, a huge favor, by quickly publishing the report mm. so that we can come back here, you invite us to deal with specifics. Okay. Mm. Now, 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 I was just going to say that uh, yes. there's an article that I came across online okay. by Lee Epstein and Eric A. Posner, mm -hmm. uh, 2016, Supreme Court Justices' Loyalty to the President. That's and right. this is a, an American, you know, I mean, a research. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Journal of Legal Studies. <laughs> you know, volume 45, number 2, June yeah. 2016. Yeah. All right. And uh, Eric Posner is... Uh, it, one, anal you know, it analyzes the Supreme Court's uh, decision on the election petition right. and tries to say where the loyalty so was to. Mm -hmm. Election petition. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 We then are able to relate to it. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because yeah. the benefit, <laughs> the, the thing is that for you, Kweku, the benefit is that um, you are right on the point that you don't have the benefit of those cases. Yeah, but it is not the case that those cases have been veiled. Right. Uh -huh. yes. he, but the justices are also saying it is not British. Right. 
Koku has made that point. Okay. <laughs> let's hear. Let's hear. Let, let, let me. Let let's hear. Let, let, briefly. Let, then we can move to. We can move to. We can move to Martin Amido. When cases are going to court. They don't go in the name of NDC or yeah, NGP. Yeah. So the judges are worried. Why no, do you no, make no, this no. in the first think, place? I don't think they should be too worried. And it violates the code. The, 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 the days, like <laughs> my colleague, uh, I want know, a better good, yeah, yeah. The days where they are put in and taken out rampantly and threatened are over. They are long gone. virtually long gone mm. for over two decades. Now we can confirm that they have stability. And believe me, each time a group of people cannot be questioned. You need to, as a society, you need to find a way of measuring them. Are you if saying you judges cannot be questioned? No, beca no, because largely, you, you, people, even our culture and demeanor doesn't give us ease to question their integrity, the way they do their way. They that is a, why. They have a complaint that's that is, there. That is, that is, that is if why. If you have any issues, but you go and dump it in the complaint. But that is, that they will is deal why. with them. That is and why. lawyers are taking judges, yes. judges yes. to the complaint. Yeah, but you know and they have been removed. Yeah, but you know sometimes, mm. Mm. I know, I mean, I've heard you a number of times, mm. when you are asked to just, oh, get a senior lawyer, mm -hmm. because you want, you are afraid sometimes when you go before them, <laughs> having heard no, you make no. comments. I'll say this here. Because you have said this When, when, Radio people call me, and I say, I, I even suggest, and I no, get I them. You. I get them other senior lawyers yes. to speak to. Yes. I don't do that because I am afraid. Okay. Because my belief is that the law, the life you of the law is experience. experience. And, and so, some people are more. And so my you. eight years is yes. not sufficient. Okay, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but let, it doesn't let, mean that let, I let cannot research. He was doing too much disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because when I go to court, yes. I meet yeah. lawyers who are thirty years or forty years old, and I win cases against them. So. Yeah. Let me say this. That's right. Uh, with all humility, I've vetted all the Supreme Court justices, with the exception of Justice Atulia, mm -hmm. by sitting in Parliament. And because I'm not a lawyer, what I do is that I read a lot about the Supreme Court in the United States of America, and I watch vetting. So I try to go into cases. If you remember when the Chief Justice was being vetted, I was quoting cases and showing why even inconsistency in the way they were, to the extent that the Chief Justice herself admitted that they will have to create a platform where they'll be looking at all these judges yeah. and scrutinizing I was surprised them. you were able yes. to do that. So what I do is that <laughs> when we are going to vet in a Supreme Court, because I hold them in extremely high esteem, extremely high esteem, I will spend time to look at at least three vetting at the Supreme Court in a, in a Congress on Supreme Court justices. So what three, three justices means that sometimes I'll have to watch the video for our two weeks. Because they sometimes do it in three days, four days, mm -hmm. and what have you. So, in fairness, I have, even though I'm not a lawyer, I have a fair idea what we are talking about. In America, they've added another column. They are not talking about only political leaning, but they are talking about even religious belief mm. of the judge. And they could predict that when a judge, a Supreme Court justice, is a Catholic, and you bring the issue of Abort industry and workers wanting abortion and wanting the company to pay for that medical decision how a judge could say that no because of his belief. Yeah. So it is something that it is yeah, true now. It is political and religious. And for me, what justice, uh, what our, our brother uh, Professor Atukuba did is something we need to encourage. Yes, they may not be too happy with the language. I want to play with them. I sit here, if you were to leave me, I would never want to go for election. I want to remain in parliament until I decide that I don't want to go. If you ask the president, you won't say but we, every four years, we have to go for other people to judge us. Sometimes wrongly, sometimes rightly. Mm. But the Supreme Court does this. We should allow researches such as this. And I want to agree with my senior brother, Koku, that let Prof publish this. Mm. Let us be able to interrogate no, how we are the chief, justice. The, chief justice, the chief Justice cautioned him and said he should be careful in releasing it. He must release it. And we have to encourage other academics to do more. Because then it's the only way that when it's a Supreme Court judge, judge sits to write his judgment, he knows that after all, there could be a research that could expose where the person had decided because of the, the grayness of the area to do A or B. This is, the fourth, come, this is the fourth highest person in the republic mm -hmm. telling you that you have to be careful in releasing no, this. And no, that even I disagree if you with do, her. you should add some salt. Like the listen, Bible says, to listen, it. Listen, I yeah. disagree with him. Let us let allow him to do his research. I just encourage you to do because listen, when you do a research, yeah. 
I mean, those of us who I did planning, and you have to go through a lot of research work, and people can look at how you sample your, the, the sample size, how you pick your sample, how you came to your conclusion, yeah. and be able to even say that this research, the, mo the, the, the method that you use, there are some questions. Mm. I get in it. So therefore, your, your, your conclusions could also be questionable. Okay. And if it is properly done, people could, could assert that, no, yeah. this research was properly done. Right. So I want to encourage them. They should mm. encourage people to research into this thing. Yes, obviously. Worse. I mean, I've always said that you can say somebody is stupid without necessarily saying that you are stupid. You say it in a way that the person may not feel offended until maybe he gets home, he thinks through it, and says, ah, what he really meant was that I was a fool. So mm -hmm. I think that when okay. we are doing this, we, because right. we are, like she said, okay. because of the nature of our society, right. we can gradually okay. do it. But I think it's a very useful thank thing. You. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, we should now move to talk about Martin Amidou's vetting. So we'll take a break and then come to talk about Martin <coughs> Amidou. I see how we can deal with that too within a certain time limit so that we can make the best use of the presence <laughs> of Yao Wabinga Samwa and Dominic Ayine. Over yes. the cash for seats. You know the allegations and everything that yeah. I've thrown about. Missing link in last week. And the missing <laughs> link. Yes. And and all of that that has mm. happened. But in respect of the judges, the Chief Justice says something that is something that I say oftentimes that if you are appointed as a judge of the Superior Court and you know that you have been appointed, no one can touch you for whatever That's thing. Right. The one who has appointed you has no power mm. over you. If you go to do something because you want to please some party or somebody, then I think you are not qualified to be a judge. Sure. We'll be right back. Yeah.